Hello everybody. Welcome to the Gyrocopter Flying Club. First of all, thank you to everybody who's donated to the club. It helps with this project and will allow it to continue at this pace into the future. If you'd like to donate, please follow the link in the description. And for all of you, remember to subscribe. This is part 22 of the history of the gyroplane. In this film, we look at an aircraft that divides opinion as much as the car company Tesla. It's either the greatest thing ever to happen, or it's nonsense and the company will soon be bankrupt. Until now, there seems to be no middle ground. It is, of course, the personal air land vehicle, or as you might know it, the PAL-V. PAL-V is a Dutch company that is and has been developing the flying car. It's a two-seat, inside-by-side -side configuration, and is an aircraft that can travel on public roads. As a car, it's based on the old Carver 1 three-wheeler, and PAL-V retains that three-wheeled format. As an aircraft, it converts to fly as a gyroplane. Power is provided by two Rotax 912 engines, giving 200 horsepower. Whilst as a car, we use just a single 912 motor, giving just 100 horsepower for the highway. Empty, the aircraft is 664 kilos, with maximum takeoff weight at 910, giving 246 kilos of load, which needs to include fuel for two 912 engines, which in my experience burn broadly 15 litres each per hour, or around 22 kilos an hour in total. This project has had a long gestation period, with the founders thinking of the concept in 1999, building a company to make the dream a reality in 2008, and the first prototype testing on the road in 2009. It's been in the media with the prototype vehicle since 2012, and ultimately the stated goal is to hand over vehicles to customers in 2021. The keen-eyed amongst you will notice that the pilot is flying the prototype without hands on what looks like a steering wheel, and that's because there's two sets of controls. One to control the aircraft as an aircraft, the other to control the vehicle as a car. The first 90 units will be sold as Pioneer editions costing €600,000 in the UK, before production reverts to the Sport edition and that will be around €360,000 in the UK. So where do we start? Is it a halo product? Is it a realistic proposition for a wider market? Is it a technology demonstrator? Here's my take. I actually think it's none of those things. But let me start by qualifying that last statement. There are a team of very knowledgeable and technically competent people at PAL-V, and the Dutch government have invested heavily in the programme. And yes, the concept has clearly provided some demonstration of the ability to combine something that can fly with something that can drive. So in that sense, it is a technology demonstrator. But is it a relevant technology demonstrator? Will either flying or driving elements reset expectations as an aircraft or automobile? You've got to think not. So therefore, is the value add in the transition? Well, maybe, but then you have to qualify the role it fulfills and for whom. As a halo product, obviously, there are some that will buy one of everything to leave gathering dust. But in 2020, luxury is a very crowded space. And in developed countries, you'll never be able to take off and land on highways as and when you please, which does limit the ability to either show off your new toy or exploit the transitional element for mass market appeal. What I mean to say is you can't really believe any given journey will be part fly, part drive as and when it suits. So you have this wonderful car that can transition to an aircraft, but you're still tied to the usual aviation infrastructure and aviation process. And that tends to be a pain for the guy just wanting to play once in a while because the pilot process is a long and necessarily committed one. And even there, there's challenges. Now, I know there's going to be an EASA gyroplane license because currently in the EU, there is only national licenses. But this aircraft is effectively a twin engine aircraft and the maximum takeoff weight 
is way beyond what is allowable in all EU countries for gyroplanes so far. So how some of these issues get squared away without leaving unintended consequences will be very interesting. I suspect the hope is to extract value from the project by trying to create some unique IP that is actually certified and compliant, which is then sold to a third party who wants to shortcut development time for a similar product. In the meantime, exciting times, and I think 2021 will be a key milestone for the product's credibility in the format that it's currently being marketed as.